Hey there, and uh, welcome to a video, type of video I don't normally do, um, but for this gentleman, I am willing to, you know, change things up a little bit um, for a few reasons. Um, now, as you can tell from the title, um, we've lost a great um, director, writer, producer, um, a, uh, someone who is, you know, was a, a name, a staple in the horror community, if you will. And while a lot of people will probably talk about, um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and the Scream series, um, as you know, those are two very, very important uh, pieces of his his work and his career. Um, I wanted to also focus on uh, a lot of the other stuff that he's done, um, as mainly directed, um, and uh, as such, you know, maybe open your eyes up, and, and you know, maybe you didn't realize that uh, he directed these movies. So over here you will start seeing in chronological order from the first film that he directed through to the last film that he directed um, everything from Wes Craven now I could easily um, you know mourn his, his passing but I would much rather uh, celebrate what he brought to my life, to his fans' lives, um, and, you know, I will leave the mourning to his, his family. That, that's who should be mourning. As a fan, he's given us so much, you know, just because he is no longer with us doesn't mean that, you know, what he gave us is, you know, went with him. No, we still are able to, um, enjoy everything that he's given us um he is uh he well he he was he was is, a lot of people may not like everything that Wes Craven's done that that's that's easily acceptable um some people don't think he is the auteur that uh, and shouldn't be on the pedestal that some people you know put him on but honestly whether it be you know the grind uh, the grindhouse sort of last house on the left or the hills have eyes you know early stuff or you know to the groundbreaking uh, nightmare on elm street series uh, and then of course you know uh, the re uh, populating of the horror genre into our common society with the scream franchise the man has managed to do so much. Um, I was lucky enough to have met him, actually, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. He, I think it was a fan expo where they had, he was, he was the guest of honor for the Rue Morgue Festival of Fear, and he wa had an event there, which was a dinner with Wes Craven, and it was extra money. It was considerable amount of money, but you know what? Being that I was a fan and I had the disposable cash at the time, I decided, you know what, I'm going to pay this and see what this is all about. Well, most of it was, you know, in a bar, essentially Wes Craven in, at one table and everybody else eating at the other table, and you got turns to spend a few minutes um, with Wes Craven. And I will say that he was an absolute gentleman. Um, while everybody else was, you know, eating dinner, he and his wife, neither of which, both were there, um, uh, the only thing they consumed was alcohol. <laughs> and, um, I think I was first up, me and another guy were first up, so we're getting there, and, and the other guy, you know, who was coming up with me, he had, you know, the... Uh, Freddy Krueger running shoes, um, and he wanted to get them signed. 
and honestly I'd never seen him before so that was kind of a, a treat as it was um, so you know Wes Craven was like oh these are really cool that's awesome and he signed them and you know he, the other guy asked some questions you know standard horror type things about his career and all that kind of stuff and you know when it came to me and asking questions you know being the, the gentleman that he was he was like you know do you have any questions and stuff like that and uh, honestly my questions revolved uh, essentially around beer um, and about uh, his, his wife and uh, working together and stuff like that um, I figured since they were both there you know I, I, I did direct a, a question directly to her but she was like oh you know what it, this, this is Wes's his evening Let's, uh, well, I'll let Wes uh, answer that one for me and um, you know and he was kind of whatever but uh, yeah we essentially we didn't really talk movies so much as you know we talked about uh, what he enjoyed to drink and and you know what his favorite beers and stuff were <laughs> simply because you know that's what we were doing we were drinking beers we were shooting shooting the shit right me and Wes Craven and, and you know as, as much as I could get his his wife to uh, uh, chime in there whenever I could uh, you know I only had a short amount of time but I did you know want to get her involved because really she she was just sitting there and I whenever anybody else was talking they were all talking directly to Wes Craven and it understandably he's the guy you're there to see but I don't think people realize that um, she was she's a producer um, and she actually produced uh, two of his uh, well she was a producer associate producer on Heather's and she also produced um, my soul to take and scream four uh, as well as other ones but those are ones that you would know um, honest I think her name is Ia I Y A, if my memory's terrible, I can look it up. I'm sure, but either way. So yeah, I got to meet Wes, and he was a fantastic. You know, I did his Q and A and all that kind of stuff, and he's just he was just a fantastic um, gentleman. Uh, was there for his fans. Like I said, neither him nor his wife ate dinner. They didn't eat before coming there. They went right from the the convention right to this this event, and they were just drinking. <laughs> Uh, booze, so they had a, a you know a liquid dinner if you if you want to call it that, and uh, yeah, they were troopers and they did they did the entire thing. So I uh, you know that was my you know personal experience with with Wes Wes Craven and uh, you know to this day uh, you know I said I wouldn't really go on to it, but he he you know he brought about the Nightmare on Elm Street series, um, which you know. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 is one of my favorite films of all time. He didn't direct that, so I won't really talk about it, but if he hadn't have brought around a Nightmare on Elm Street who, you know, Freddy Krueger is, you know, whereas I, I'm a Freddy Krueger guy. When it comes to the slashers, you know, I'm not into the Friday the 13th and Jason or Halloween and Michael Myers or Chucky and Child's Play, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'm a, I'm a Freddy Krueger. I'm a Nightmare on Elm Street guy. That's my, my thing. When the box sets and the movies came out, that was it you know i i just have you know because of of the anchor bay and screen factory i now have the halloween set but nightmare on elm street i got that i got that set when it came out man that full dvd box set i got that right away right away it was like day one boom buy it got it so that just goes to show you i i am you know nightmare on elm street is my thing um but like i said i didn't want to just talk about um those films um because you know what and Thanks to Scream Factory, just recently, um, two of uh, it was two or three. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Shocker, um, which if you like a Nightmare on Elm Street, you're gonna love Shocker, and The People Under the Stairs, um, which is a great film in and of itself, have are you know are are in everybody's minds. But uh, did they also release a, The Serpent and the Rainbow, which to, is one of my favorite favorite voodoo films. Um, it's 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 brilliant. I remember when I first saw it, and I was just like, "Whoa, this is crazy stuff!" and and it wasn't so much that it scared me, but it was so bizarre and the way it was shot and and the visuals in it. I was just like, "Whoa, this is this is you know to my I don't know what was like maybe I don't know between, between ten and twelve year old mind. I was just like, "Whoa, this is so wow, this is a great movie." I it stuck with me, and I you know. Still remember some of the scenes from it, 
uh, you know, as I grew up and hadn't seen it for a while, and then of course you get to see it again, and 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 you're you, it's one of those films that it it still has that power, um, and then of course you have stuff like. Um, the Hills Have Eyes and The Hills Have Eyes Part 2. A lot of people don't care much for Part 2, but The Hills Have Eyes, oh my god. Oh my god, that... Uh, honestly, <laughs> I think The Hills Have Eyes works so well, um, partially due to Michael Berryman. Um, obviously, he's not the the only person. D. Wallace, of course, um, has, uh, is a big part of that, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. They the <laughs> Michael Berryman just has that look, right? And he, I don't know, he, that backwoods savage, crossbred killer, he just looks like that. He, they talk about casting. That, I don't think, you know, Wes Craven did the casting on that, but if he did, if he had any, any uh, hand in that he you know like Michael Berryman was the reason why the Hills of Eyes um, to me was so um, memorable um, and then you got stuff like uh, Invitation to Hell um, not really one of his high points but uh, it, it's got its moments <laughs> <laughs> um, it's probably yeah I, oh, it's got Soleil Moon Fry in it come on like that's a reason to like it I guess um, no I mean it, I enjoy the film but it's not I don't think it's going to be on anybody's top list of Wes Craven films um, but um, perhaps Swamp Thing um, uh, definitely one of those films where um, you know if you know Swamp Thing from the comics this is a comic comic movie well be before, you know, 30 years before, you know, the comic movies really blew up that like they are now. Um, but it has Ray Weiss in it and Adrian Barbeau. Hello. Like, that's awesome. David Hess. David Hess, um, who, you know, obviously a, a friend of Wes Craven from previous film. Awesome, awesome casting. It's very much a cult classic type film. Um, and it's not the greatest film, but, um, I, I don't know. I just think it works, um, for, you know, in terms of trying to bring the Swamp Thing comic to the screen, it's one of the better earlier comic adaptations, uh, uh that were, you know, was, were, was produced compared to, you know, like things like the Captain America film and Spider-Man and, you know, well, Whatever. If you've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and you got something like uh, Deadly Blessing. Um, early 80s. Uh, Sharon Stone is in this film. Uh, it's like a Amish uh, horror film, if you want to call it that. There aren't too many of those. Um, and it doesn't have too much. Uh, Ernest Bornine's in it. Um... Michael Berryman's back is in it as well, but yeah, it's one of those it's a forgotten Wes Craven films. They're very much forgotten Wes Craven films, um, which is too bad because it's yeah, it's you know what? It's funny because it, it's hard to talk about Wes Craven films without you know essentially going Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, because those are his his high points. But, you know, then you got, I'd say his, his, his next stops would be his, you know, Hills of Eyes, um, Last House on the Left, and um, Serpent in the Rainbow, People on the Stairs, and Shocker. Those are up there. And then you start getting further down, and I, I put My Soul to Take, even though it was one of his later ones, and Cursed, both of them not very good. Um, Vampire in Brooklyn. Um... Yeah, Vampire in Brooklyn. It's uh, his uh, horror comedy starring Eddie Murphy and Angela Bassett. So, um, yeah, if you're a big Eddie Murphy fan, Vampire in Brooklyn is a great, great watch. It's not your typical Wes Craven film. Um, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's... Well, it is what it is, I guess. Um, 
he's done stuff other than horror, believe it or not. Wes Craven directed a film called Music of the Heart um, in late 90s, early 2000, 99, 2000, around there, uh, with uh, Meryl Streep and uh, Angela Bassett's in it as well. It's 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 a film that's been um, similar st- films recently, uh, uh, similar to it, and essentially... Uh, it's, it's about the school teacher who's trying to teach uh, violin to inner city uh, kids from Harlem um, and you know obviously you know the white and black um, struggle type thing uh, uh, you know the race type stuff the um, economic divide all that kind of stuff and obviously it's violin so it's classical music they're not into the classical music um I'm pretty sure Siskel and Ebert gave it two thumbs up. So, it, you know, like, it, it, yeah, I think Ebert, yeah, I think he was still alive then, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a great, great movie. Not at all what you associate with Wes Craven, and yet, hey, it's I, I don't think too many people are going to talk about Music of the Heart. If you if you're into dramas, and you're a fan of Wes Craven. Check it out, Music of the Heart from 1999. Track it down, give it a watch. Definitely worth checking out. Um, one of the films that I had high hopes for, but was unfortunately let down, was a film from the early 2000s, around 2004, 2005-ish, called Red Eye. And... It's it's about a movie flying, um, yeah, it's political. Uh, it's more of a thriller than anything, really. I would say, uh, sort of like a mystery thriller. Um, but it stars uh, Rachel McAdams. Uh, it also has Brian Cox in it, and um, I think that's all I can think of. No, Cillian Murphy's in it. That's it. I knew there was another one. Um, but, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, as thrillers go, it was decent, but I, I don't know, I was expecting more, um, and I'd say it's so-so, and so that's another film, I, you know what, nobody's gonna talk about Red Eye when it comes to, uh, Wes Craven, but a film that they should talk about is Paris Je T'aime, uh, which came out the year after Red Eye, and um, Wes Craven actually directs one of the segments. There's multiple segments in this in the film, and it's, he uh, directs the segment called uh, Père Lachaise, um, and it's one of those films that, if you're a Wes Craven fan, again, uh, similar to Music of the Heart, if you're the horror person, you're not going to like it. It's it's very much a drama. But in terms of drama, if you're into drama, check out Paris Je T'aime. It is a... It's, it's just these stories telling, trying to portray Paris um, via different, you know, little vignettes and stuff like that. Um, I remember I, I wanted to see it in theaters, but I couldn't get out to see it. And eventually, I, you know, I was tracking down. I ended up downloading it. I know, I know, I'm not a downloader generally, but it wasn't a film that I was going to buy. Um, really didn't have any way of renting it. Uh, you know, streaming wasn't a, a really available yet. So I could have done a, probably a, mo- you know, pay-per-view movie on demand type thing. I'm sure I could have probably tracked that down. But eventually I just downloaded it. I wanted to see it. I wanted to check it out. But it was one of those films where I was like, I don't want to spend the money to see this because it's not really my thing. But I knew, you know, like, there's like 20 director credits in this thing. Um, it's got almost 30 writing credits. And it, it, I just, I remember people saying that it was very, very beautiful. And 
even though they knew it wasn't my thing, they still suggested I check it out. Um, and when somebody does that, it usually means that the film is really, really good. And I enjoyed it. Paris Je T'aime is, is not great, but considering the type of film that it was or is and the type of film that I'm into and the fact that I still managed to enjoy um, the film, it... Yeah, uh, it's 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 just a beautiful film, and of course, like I said, Wes Craven does direct a part in it. Um, but yeah, coming to the end of his career, he's got Scream Four, which essentially should end the franchise, right? And before that, My Soul to Take. Ah, uh, yeah, serial killer film, horror thriller. Um, yeah. I think it was released in 3D. So maybe you got that, but yeah, my soul to take. Not a good end of your career type of uh, film. Um, of course, Wes Craven uh, is also, he's not just a director, he's also a producer. And that's what he's been, uh, been doing since um, uh, the last film he directed, Scream 4. He's been um, working on a screen television series, uh, so and a couple of other films. He was he was a producer on. Understandable. I mean, the guy made his money, <laughs> but it would have been nice to see something after Screen Four that was more along the lines of like, you know, maybe the people under the stairs or the serpent in the rainbow. Uh, or A Nightmare on Elm Street. Maybe even going right back to the beginning and it being some, you know, really dirty Last House on the Left type thing. Though, I, admittedly, I don't, you know, he's aged. That's not really where he's going to be going. Though, it would have been nice to, to see him go back to those roots and do that. Um, so, that being said, you know, celebrate Wes Craven. I usually, whenever somebody passes away, I ch watch one of their movies, and that's es essentially all I do. Um, if I, it's something, somebody that I really um, think should be celebrated, I may also post on Facebook uh, about their passing and let other people know just to spread the news. Um, but when it comes to Wes Craven, I posted on Facebook. I actually got a text message from my girlfriend um, last night. Um, after I left her house, you know, saying, "Hey, Wes Craven passed away," and th that's how how much of an influence Wes Craven had. There have been so many horror, um, and, and not just horror, but you know, actors, directors, etc., who have passed away and, since I've known her. This is the first person she's contacted me before I even knew about it to let me know that that she she heard of his passing. So that just goes to show you that obviously she felt that this was somebody who was important enough even to her to pass along to me um, the the news. And so, you know, I immediately gave my respects on Facebook. Uh, I will watch probably The Last House on the Left, go right back to where he started and pay my tribute that way and then through this video, pay my tribute and celebrate the life that was Wes Craven so with that being said why don't you go check out one of the films that I showed here and uh, yeah celebrate the life that was Wes Craven and all that he gave to us um, thank you and uh, my condolences to your family and your wife even though none of them will see this um yeah Ila Bunka you know it was great meeting you hope that you uh stay strong and Wes Craven wherever you are thank you thank you very much from the bottom of my heart till next video guys take care have a good one